Hi everyone. Welcome to the Rustic Garden Homestead. Today we're going to talk about some easy, inexpensive, really simple trellis ideas for your garden. And we're also going to talk a little bit about mulching and how you can use it in your garden and how you can keep the weeds down in your walkways. I really like what you've done here with just a really simple galvanized piece of a mesh wire. Yeah, it's really inexpensive and it's a great way to manage your container plants. So, and it's set up in two ways. If you're thinking ahead, and, and sometimes I do that, sometimes I forget. If you got the time before you set in the soil, just drop in the cut fencing right into your container, fill it up, it'll be nice and secure. And you can grow cucumbers up it, you can grow beans up it, it'll also support tomatoes or peppers. Perfect. And if sometimes you forget, and you can take a look right down there. Yeah, because that happens to me all the time. I have my container filled with soil, and then I realize I need to add a trellis. So I love how you just put your trellis down here at the bottom of the container and then put a very simple piece of rope around it to hold it in place. Yep. Then you can drop your plants in and just climb up the trellis and you are good to go. And it's nice and secure. And you just want to drop in any bamboo post to give it a little more security and you can trellis just about anything on here. That's right. And this wire you can buy in big rolls. You can split some with a friend and yep. it's good for all different types. We'll show a couple other ways you've used it here in the garden um, down through the video here. All right. Two other types of trellises. The most simple one, two stakes in the ground, put some jute across or any kind of string, and the pole beans will naturally latch onto here with their tendrils, but you can just kind of weave them in and you can see how it works its way up. And this is really, really inexpensive. These posts are like three bucks at Home Depot. And you might even have things laying around the garden. I've even used uh, old shovels, dried up sunflower stalks, pretty much anything that you can stick in the ground. Tree branches. Tree branches, That's this is probably about six feet tall. Yep perfect for peas or other lighter kinds of vegetables. Exactly. And here's another option. I absolutely love these rolls of galvanized wire fencing because you can shape them, as we mentioned before, into a round trellis to a tomato cage or just put it straight in the ground with a couple of T-posts and then tie your vegetables to it as it grows. So Gary, I think down here you've got maybe, is it a squash plant? I That's an Armenian cucumber. Okay, perfect. But this is strong enough for squash too. It's a nice, secure trellis. Very secure, and you could even, if you're shaping it into a cage, you can cut some holes in it so you can reach your hand through. Yep. You can also buy it with bigger squares, so just kind of think ahead of what you want to use it for, and that'll work. Perfect, and super inexpensive too. Another inexpensive trellis is right here in front. This is a big 10-foot um, piece of section. I think it's called, um, it's a mesh, and I can't think of the name. <laughs> And we ladder mesh? Our, it's ladder mesh, thank you. You get it at Home Depot, it's about five bucks, it's 10 feet, and you can see that you can form it into a nice rainbow. Drop a brick on here just for some uh, strength on the post going into the ground, and you can grow a whole lot right through here. And I like it too, because it adds some dimension to the garden. Right. A lot of different shapes, sizes, arches, it really makes your garden um, pretty. So I'll probably put beans up this, and right underneath is gonna be the squash plant, so you can pack more into a space by doing something just like that. Perfect. Now, Gary, I have never seen this type of a trellis before. What is this? So, actually, there's no name for it. So, if you're looking for it on Amazon or something like that, I haven't been able to find a name. But I found this at my local hardware store, and it's just heavy metal. If I would pull this out, it's going to close up. It was 15 bucks, but it's solid, and it's going to last a long time. Oh, yeah, it's really And thick. if you can't find something like this, any kind of structure that you can make a triangle or even kind of a rainbow is perfect for cucumbers, because we have two cucumbers growing in here, and all you do oh, nice. is gently, because they'll break, is start weaving them up the trellis, and I just broke it, they're that tender. Mm -hmm. But all the way through here, two different plants, and they will grow up this, and when they come down this side, I'll tuck them back around and go up again. And the ladder mesh that we just uh, were talking about, that's just for extra support. So I can also put the cucumbers as this grows up right through here. And there's a third right next to your right is another way we're using the ladder mesh. Oh, nice. Because I told you it was 10 feet tall. Wow. And you can just drop a post into the ground, weave the mesh right through it, and you can grow anything on here too. And it's strong. I mean, it's going to take the weight. So this is perfect for like the scarlet runner beans I have in my garden that I have it on a cattle panel arch. Right. It'd be perfect to put maybe two seeds in here and the scarlet runner beans are about 10 or 12 feet tall. I'll grow all the way up there, maybe even down the next side. It would be a really pretty like frame, frame out here for your garden and really ornamental. And there's flexibility that if you want to harvest it, you can reach up, oh, wow. grab what you want, and then put it back up. So it, it's useful that way nice. too. Nice, I love this. If you're on a budget, the easiest way to trellis is just getting steaks. Again, you can buy them at Home Depot. You can reuse the things that you were talking mm -hmm. about. If you take three posts, put two in at an angle, run down the middle, uh, run straight in the middle, 
just tie them off at the top. It provides a lot of support and this is going to be super strong too and you can grow just about anything you want up, up it. Right over here, same principle. These are watermelons and it's just two stakes next to each other and I just weave the jute back and forth and just stitch the watermelon vines through there. And again, super sturdy and you can grow vertically right here. That's perfect. And all this vertical growing and trellising is a great way to save space. Right. If you're working with a limited space, put as many of these simple things in as you can and that way you're not spread out all over this place. You're growing up instead of out. And you can grow up mostly and let them also grow out a little bit too. And you can see how I've connected together the different trellises we were talking about. Here's another one of those. And the watermelon are coming up here. They're also going up there. And this is cantaloupe that are on two inverted tomato cages, or one inverted. So that's a regular tomato cage. If you look down here, right at the bottom. And then I just flipped another one upside down and secured it together. And then I curl down oh, the legs and then you would just drop your plant on there. Perfect. So it takes a smallish tomato cage and makes it just a little bit taller for your vegetables. Nice and big and plenty of room for the cantaloupe. Now I love what Gary's done here with a very simple PVC pipe. PVC pipe is so inexpensive. Maybe around five or six dollars for a 10, 12 foot pole like this. This is 10 feet, about five bucks, yeah. And he has just, he's got four different poles shaped up into a teepee type of a structure here. Mm -hmm. And let me show you guys what he's done. It's very, very sturdy, very, very easy to install. Right here, stuck in the ground, he's got some rebar which is very easy to just pound right in your ground and sink it nice and deep so it's sturdy. And then just sunk down the PVC pipe over the rebar, just like that. And then it also makes for a flexible structure as well, if you live in a windy area like I do. And you can trellis some pretty sturdy vegetables up yeah, here. Yeah, you can do a whole lot. You can yeah. also put some string around here if you need to. Nice. And the rebar was uh, a two foot piece. So, and you want to go down about 12 inches with okay. it. So it's nice and secure. Nice. If we step down this way, show you what else we're doing with that. Not only is it sturdy, but it also provides some really nice garden interest and garden beauty. And you're gonna last a good yes, six, eight, durable. 10 years. So this is another place where I'm growing beans. You can see that I just put them in the ground. Again, secured, just putting down the spike right there nice. and just dropping this over. And this is gonna keep some nice motion going. These are the pole beans, right? That'll These just are the wind pole up beans. And the for pole? harvesting, right. And so for harvesting, you can drop it down like this so oh, wow. that you can grow 10, 12 feet tall, but you can get to it. So and you don't have to get a ladder. You don't need a ladder, <laughs> you know. And if they have trouble grabbing onto this, again, you could actually tie a piece of jute here and just let it drape down and it will weave onto the jute and go up the, up the pole. So here we have a perfect example of two of the ladder meshes. These are each a 10 foot ladder mesh formed into an arch, which I think is really pretty and then tie it together with zip ties at the top so it keeps them, keeps them nice and secure. And then we've got a couple of poles here. These are a little bit thinner, so they're, they allow for more flexibility. And Gary has just kind of weaved the poles through the ladder mesh so that it holds them in place. And then a couple of bush beans, or not bush beans, um, pole beans down here, which we can uh, wind up around the trellis and they'll probably end up climbing, I would they'll imagine. They'll take off right and they'll go to the other side. All the way over to the other side. So that's and then be really another pretty. variety on the other side so they meet in the middle. So that'll be really pretty. And I know you use cattle panel. Because I'm not able to get the 16 foot cattle panel into my car, uh -huh. this is an option. So you could put these next to each other because there's another one behind you all the way oh, down perfect. and you can make a tunnel where you're walking through and you're just picking your green beans That'd or whatever. So pretty. This is pretty strong, like you couldn't grow melons or anything mm -hmm. on it, but definitely you can grow green beans up here or small cucumbers. Peas maybe peas, in the cooler definitely. weather. For sure, you could grow the peas up here in the cool weather. Definitely. The other option that I use that you can make too, these are 10 foot racks that go in your closet. They're covered in vinyl. You get them from Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart. Um, I've mentioned in other videos, you can go to thrift stores and just find this they're inexpensive and you can create a huge trellis just like this. This is a heavy butternut squash, or I'm sorry, this is the acorn squash. Butternut squash is down one more, cool. but it oh, will right take here. the weight of the acorn squash. Nice. Look how huge these leaves are. Yeah, it's incredible. and it's doing well. And again, growing vertically saves space rather than having it sprawl out over there. And you can see the other three going right out this way. 
And we can go ahead and walk up because I want to show you the beds that I mulched and the beds that I did not mulch. And Gary, the thing about these that I really like, you might be spending $10 or so mm. on these, $10 or $15. 10 or 12 bucks, yeah. But they're a really good investment for your, for your garden. I think that's important to mention is when you're spending money on your garden, you want to make sure, for the most part, they're things that are going to last. These will last you forever. Yeah, I've had these for six years in my previous yeah. garden. I actually gave them away. So they're going to last for a nice long time. they're in perfect time. condition. So. And you can see right in here is the butternut squash starting form. There's actually two of them. There's another one. Oh, cool. Right. Let's see if I can open that up right in there. Wow, that is so cool. Yeah, so it's going to work. So here's all the trellising materials I use that wow. I haven't put out in the garden yet. So here's the, the wire. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Perfect example of the roll of galvanized fencing. So it's about, what, five feet tall or so? Yeah, four or five feet. And perfect. I think this is a 50 foot roll, but I use it also for my um, trees. Right over there, if you grab that, that's the A-frame and it just shows you how easy it opens oh, up. Oh, perfect. And it's super lightweight. And you can probably sink it right there. Okay. Whoop, just give it a tear. And this, this wire, I don't know what the gauge is, but it's, it's heavier it's than thick. a cattle it's panel. It's yeah, really, yeah. really thick. So this is gonna last a really pushes long right time. pushes right down on the ground, right. perfect. And then this is all the different materials. Yeah. These are uh, five foot, six foot bamboo poles. You can get them at Home Depot. They're only three bucks for five like this. And then we have right in here is the T-post. And these are the one by ones Eight too. Foot pole. Eight foot pole, mm -hmm. about three bucks. And you can really make whatever you need out of this and it's not that expensive. You can trellis all kinds of stuff with it. You can, I got more to do. You can use mulch in several ways. Real quick, in the paths, I've mulched them out. This keeps the weeds down. It works really well. It also keeps the moisture in because the roots will travel out of the raised beds. But right in here, I haven't mulched. Here's a better example right up here of a space that's unmulched and it's already starting to dry out and crust and it rained yesterday. So by the end of today, this is gonna dry out in the top two inches. Over here next to Kim, is where I use mulch. I use the shredded hardwood and I recommend this is what people use. So yeah, Gary's got some shredded hardwood in here and you can see just by pulling back some of the mulch, the surface of the soil is very, very moist. So it really helps cut down on the water evaporation. And what works for mulch for me really well is just simply using shredded leaves. So you can collect the leaves in the fall or in the spring, make sure there's no grass clippings that might have been treated with herbicides in it. And it really helps with the water evaporation. Now in our climate in California, where we get no rain basically for six months, mulch is an absolute necessity for me. Um, it really helps keep my garden bed going in the heat, keeps the plants cool, and I don't have to water near as much. It makes a difference. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Comment below, let us know what other DIY, very simple, inexpensive trellises you like to use in your garden. We'd love to have some new ideas, right Gary? Yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. We are rolling. Okay, three, two, one, action. Hi everyone. So let's start again, I start <laughs> laughing. Oh, <gosh>, Gary. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting tired. All come right. on, Gary. Whoa. Come on, Gary. Usually I'm the one that's getting tired. <laughs> All right. Okay. We're rolling. Three, two, one, action. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today we're going to do a video on easy DIY trellis option. Oh, I'll start again. No, I can't. I'm, I'm no, spent. That was, good. <laughs> that was good. All right. All right. We're, we're Maybe you're not rolling. used to being on camera. <laughs> we're still right. rolling. Okay. okay, we are rolling, Tim. Okay. Three, two, one, action. Hi, everyone. <laughs> 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 All right, keep just keep rolling. Ready? Okay, three, two, one, action. Three. Oh my gosh. Three, two, one. <laughs> Jerry. We're just done. We're just, I'm not. I'm good. Just, oh no, I'm good. But it's okay. funny. We, we can do that. We can do this one and then take a break. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm good, man. Okay, three, two, one, action. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it's the heat. All right. We can put a blooper reel I'm in so at the end. I'm so enthusiastic. Hi, everyone. I think that's what Gary's laughing at. A little bit. Okay. I will, I'll try not to be quite so enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. Well, he's smiling. It's hard to keep straight. I know. Oh, okay. I'll look down. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jerry, you steady on the cam? Yeah, we're rolling. Right. Yep. Three, two, one, action. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today we're gonna do a video on, uh, I don't wanna say do a video, sorry. Okay, three, two, one, action. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Rusted Garden <laughs> Homestead. Oh, <geez. laughs> one, action. <laughs> That's 
what I'm used to saying, Gary. It's my it's my crutch phrase, okay? It's my crutch phrase. I know it gets you set. Okay, Sorry. it does. This is a good blooper I say reel. it even oh. when we're practicing, because I'm just so used to it. All right. Okay, three, okay. two, one, action. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the rest. I can't do it. Oh my I'm God, Gary. <laughs> I did it three times. <laughs>